Peace family, welcome to Soul Healing, where we discuss spirituality, service, and transformation. So right now we are still um, kind of sharing our experience in the Gambia and uh, what we've been up to so far is getting my son enrolled in school. So the first thing that I had to do was his father, who is Gambian, went ahead and got him his Gambian passport. And then... Magical nut. It's called a din. A din? A din. <laughs> oh, segue. This is din. This, the interesting din. thing about this din. is at the school that he's enrolled in, you can... Oh. When do you buy these? When? Is it like snack break? time? During There's a break, no such thing as snack time. It's a break. A break. During a break, <laughs> they sell snacks though, right? Mm. This is a snack. For Africans. But the thing about it is, it's not like pre-packaged something. Chips or cookies or it's not, processed. It's a snack blah, here, blah. not in America. This is the snack you can buy. <laughs> a dried... It tastes like a berry. It tastes like a, a date, kind din. of. You call it din? Din. 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 So, for <laughs> how much do you pay? For five. Five, five delasi. You get, like a couple handfuls. You get a couple handful of din, and that's your snack at school. Right Tasty. off the tree. Tasty. Isn't that interesting? Another interesting thing that I found is... The books home. that come home for homework Oops, is there's black kids on it, the books. You see that? <laughs> I've never in my life, having been educated from kindergarten through high school. Okay, let me talk. Through high school, through, through, uh, undergraduate through graduate school never saw a black face unless it was uh, an author that I decided to read or if it was a black history course never saw a black face on a textbook or a book of any kind this surprised me for some reason so the way that this works is first you have to find a school right you have a child you're looking for a school you don't know anybody in the gambia in the way that we did it although my husband is gambia he's been away from gambia for 20 years and we're not in a location you know where he grew up he grew up in a village so he's starting from square one in a lot of ways too because he doesn't know anyone in this area so what happens is um my husband went to a local school in our neighborhood. Look at this. A local school in our neighborhood. And he talked to the, the person in charge of the school there and explained our situation that we were from America and we were looking for a schools for our two children. And so this, what this man did is he recommended uh, two schools, one for my son, one for my daughter. And he actually met us at his school and went with us to the school that he recommended so that my son could take um, a placement test to see what grade <clears throat> he would be in in Gambia. Because the school systems are different uh, in America uh, when your child comes to Gambia they will be tested to see what grade level they should be at so my son was tested at the school that was recommended it took a couple of hours and uh, they determined that he would remain in the same grade that he was in in America, which is the fifth grade. He's 11 years old. 
So he was happy about that because he was so afraid that somehow he would test below the grade level that he was in in America, but he's still in the same grade. Um, it's a private school. There are fees for everything. Fees for tuition, fees for books, fees for after school program, fees for um, uh, uniforms. And the uniforms, it's not like you can just go to the store and buy the uniform. What happens is you purchase the material uh, from the school and then you take that material to a tailor to have the shirts and the pants or the shorts or whatever you need made. So that is also an additional cost. You're paying to have your uniforms made. You don't go to the store and buy them. Um, what else are there fees for? In addition, um, food. Every day, snacks and food you'll be paying for. There are women that come to the school that sell food and drinks to the kids. Um, not It's not expensive. Like I showed you the snacks, the den. It's five delasi for a couple of handfuls, and that's a snack. And there's other kinds of snacks and frozen drinks and soups and cereals that I have not I cannot identify at this time but um all kinds of stuff that the the Gambian women make and they sell at the school for a reasonable price for the kids um so I was able to get my son find a school get him tested get him enrolled get his uniforms, and he finally had his first day yesterday. And to his surprise, when he, when he went there, um, there's Gambian students there and there's also American students there um, at this private school. And it's walking distance from where we live, so uh, I think it, it's gonna work out well. Now, for my daughter, who turned five in March, the school that was recommended to me for her did not work out. When I went to the school to meet the person in charge of the school and to visit the facility to see what it was like, um, my empathic abilities kicked in, my intuition kicked in, and I just saw too much that I did not like. And, uh, you know, that's why it's important to visit these schools and interact with the staff and look at the students and see what you can see. What I saw is a whole bunch of little people. Now these are five year olds, six year olds, seven year olds, eight year olds. And because of certain conditions, there were also older students there that were still learning the basics that a five, six, seven year old would be learning, all mixed up in a group. I saw that there were two adults and there were about 30 students. I saw that although there were about 30 students, I did not hear any laughter. I did not see any smiles. I felt this eerie feeling and this heaviness. Um, and the energy in the facility let me know that it was not a place for my child. In addition to that, um, me being a person who's worked in education in the past, I can identify certain things really quickly and really easily. And I could quickly assess that the people that were teaching these students were not teachers. No. I don't know how they got 
in those positions, but they're not teachers. Why do I say that? Oh, because they wanted to give my daughter, who had just turned five, and you know that if you're in America, you don't even get to enter kindergarten until you're five. Um, at least on the East Coast. I don't know how it works in other parts of America. So my daughter cannot read and write. Not without some help. They gave her a written test and expected her to be able to sit down <laughs> and take a written test. I'm like, she can't take a written test. This is something that she actually needs to learn. She needs to learn how to read and write, you know? So I just said, thank you, but I don't think this is the place for my um, child. And I kindly walked her out of that facility and left all that heaviness behind me. So there's an upside and a downside here. I found one school that seemed to be a really good fit. You know, the kids are smiling, the kids are happy to be at school. I, you know, you, you get that those positive vibrations from the children when you walk into the facility um, versus kids that look sad and depressed and restricted and oppressed. And yeah, there's a mix here. So be prepared, family. Be prepared. And um, I think the best way to find a school if you're looking for a school in the Gambia is to reach out to someone who works in education and have them refer you to places. And then you go and visit those places and make an assessment yourself. And if it's not something you're comfortable with, you move on. I can teach my kids at home. I can, until I find suitable schools. Yeah. So, until next time, thank you for listening. Please like and subscribe. Stay blessed. Stay as positive as you can. Peace, family.